Today we have yet another Edison fan. And if you follow my channel, you will notice, um, or you could say Toastmaster, you will notice I have quite a few of these and I still have a lot more to go through. Um, makes me wonder if I should change the name of this channel to something with Edison or Toastmaster um, versus a Lincoln Town Car. <laughs> However, um, Shifting gears on this one a little bit, I have done uh, to this point a number of videos on the McGraw Edison comfort fans and I did a video, at least one other video on a variation of that comfort fan um, as well as a couple of thin and lights uh, variations of those, the one with the plastic grill, the metal back, the one with the metal grills on both sides. The one with um, the translucent blades, a thin and light with the translucent blades, which is the only, I have the only one I know that exists. I'm sure there's more out there, but they seem to be rare. As well as a uh, predecessor to the thin and lights, which is just a, a green, same cabinet as thin and lights, but it's green um, with white banana blades on it. So check those videos out if you're into Toastmasters and Edison's. So this one... This Toastmaster, I saw, um, I probably saw it on eBay or some of you out there you like to call it e-ripoff. I bought it um, hmm, maybe 10 years ago. I don't even think I turned it on. I might have turned it on once. I talk about it in my other videos where I like to almost kind of take a museum status with some of these. When I have units that are either one-offs that I have never really seen before that I personally really love. I don't use them. They're to me like a museum piece. I also have some vintage fans that I do run. Some that, that are, were never in great condition when I got a, a hold of them, even after I service them, but I like to enjoy them. So I do have that. And I, I talked about it in one of my McGraw Edison comfort fan videos um, where I run the one and I just keep rebuilding it when I need to or, or, or restoring it. So uh, because this one is kind of rare to me, I have not seen it because it really seems like this is a predecessor. It's kind of like the in-between fan, right? It's not a comfort fan. It's not a thin and light, but it seems like it's the predecessor to the late 80s, early 90s Toastmaster um, that ultimately finished, uh, you know, everyone knows it with the, the tannish brownish cabinet. Um, it has the plastic grill on both sides, banana style blades, and then they had a gray version of that. I believe this was the predecessor to that model when they still had the metal grill and motor mounted into the grill, which is my personal favorite. For those of you, again, who've been on my channel and have heard me rant or go on about it, it's really a childhood thing. So this is, to me, an in-between model. And I think it's in-between in two ways, right? In-between thin and light and comfort fan, but then predecessor to how the Toastmaster fans ultimately, the last kind of years of them, what they look like. So this is kind of, this predates that. What I like about this color scheme is it has, you know, the, um, the tannish cabinet, which is similar to the comfort fans. You could say even the thin and lights, I guess you could say, while it has like that Toastmaster, um, has that Toastmaster, um, cabinet to it. It has more of a comfort fan style grill, the, the brown or the black, if you will. However, it's it's uh, not quite as sturdy as the uh, comfort fan grill, and I happen to have one right right here, you know. And if we wanted to do thickness, not that I wanted to do a comparison video, the comfort fan's a little taller, slightly wider. Uh, but I like this color combination. It's kind of cool with the the dark and the light. It just, it just uh, looks pretty neat. 
This never had a handle when I got it, but this is, I mean, aside from a little dust on top from storage or museum, uh, museum shelf, it, uh, it's super, it's super smooth. The cabinet's in wonderful shape. I, with these things, I often wonder at some point, was it kind of reconditioned or not? Because it is in magnificent shape aside from the very obvious um, with the grill. This is a heck of a, you know, thing here. But I do know from experience, all it takes is one minor little accident. And, you know, maybe somebody was transporting this and it broke. Or maybe somebody's foot went through that. I don't know. This is how I, I, I acquired it. This grill has got to be super rare. Just because I don't think there's many of these in existence. At all. Yeah, so no handle. I should imagine it's similar to the thin and light handle. Um, what I'm curious is if it said Toastmaster across the strap or if it was just a solid color. I can't re recall if I've ever seen a handle or a strap that said Toastmaster on it, but they, the ones, the Edison fans do say Edison. And if it was a dark color like most of them or the light color. Knob is very similar to, not the same, definitely different, to the comfort fan. However, the, I think the most common version of this in-between fan, if you will, this predecessor fan to the more, the late, the most recent Toastmaster fans is the, um, the most common one is the one with the, the fake wood sides and it has the lighter grill, but translucent blades. I do have one of those uh, in my collection, which I'll talk about knob on that one is broken. I broke it because I was using the fan <laughs> and it just, it just, the internals just snapped. They weaken because the switch itself is becoming stiffer and stiffer. So again, interesting, interesting find. If anyone out there has this grill, hit me up in the, in the comments and I will gladly buy that off of you because if you have a complete grill, that would be wonderful. So this is just so super clean. I mean, it's just incredible. So notice how the cord is. When I acquire these and it comes shipped to me with a cord like that, that usually tells me I've never plugged it in and, and have run it before. I have a habit of doing that. <laughs> in some of these videos, I turn these fans on for the very first time after owning them for 10 plus years. And we're gonna do that here. So if it explodes, we'll do it on camera. But as, as we look closer, I do think this fan might have been reconstructed for a couple of reasons. Um, not the cord, although the cord's in really good shape. Yeah, I think the cord's original. I mean, it's really good shape, but these tend to show, these tend to be darker and I don't know if they were replaced. It's possible. The other thing is interesting is the, the plate on the motor or the cover does not match the rest of the, the, the motor color. Don't know if that was a design to this or not, but I'm not used to seeing one that's all that, that silver color. So I don't know if that was painted or what. There's a little dirt in there, but the windings are spotless windings are absolutely spotless on this so it is possible this is all just original and it just happens to be the colors this thing is it's it's to me it's a really cool fan and i just love the color of the blades and just the way it all matches up together and ties together really cool the grill is in spotless shape you might notice this it's kind of bent bent in and i haven't done anything to try to fix that but another dead clue, dead giveaway, if, if you're kind of newer to these fans and collecting them, if this has been uh, messed with, these. These usually, once they come out, if you can get them out, are replaced with traditional um, screws or like um, that you would use like a socket wrench a bolt. And there's usually like replacement washers or, or you know, or something in there, spacers, just because the vibration gets crazy. 
So my verdict is here with you on camera is this is unmolested because of this giveaway. This is the, the absolute giveaway that this is all stock and I'm thinking that plate now might be stock. If anyone has this exact model, it would be very interesting to know if the, the cover of your motor is exactly the same or not. Um, I don't have the feet for it. These aren't bad. Well, these aren't horrible with falling over. The worst for falling over is the thin and lights followed by the comfort fans, right? And the reason why, very obvious, the downfall, while I absolutely love how the motor is mounted to the grill, I've talked about it in numerous videos a million times, the, the problem with it is, is it brings the weight a little, little further on this side versus the typical like support bars, you know, which are mounted in the cabinet, you know, which I think kind of changes, changes the, where the center balance is just slightly enough so they don't fall over as easily. So that's what's going on there. So we're going to turn it on since I have it exhausting on the exhaust side here. Um, we'll fire it up. Uh, who am I kidding? You guys, you guys want to see it the other side probably. And the reason why I spent as much time as I do on the, on the exhaust side is I typically, when I run my fans in the window, have them on exhaust. I just do. I just like to move the air. I just like to move the air. And uh, the only time I really have them pulling in air is if the home is warm and the temperature is kind of going down at night, I will use it to pull the cool air in. Just like kind of immediately pull it in. Where I, f I find if it's like 90 degrees outside or whatever it is and you're just blowing hot air in from outside, uh, I, I kind of like to put it on exhaust and to pull the hot air out. Now, I guess you can make an argument either way. You can say, well, you're just pulling, moving the hot air through your house and blowing it outside. But I can say when I'm downstairs and if I'm standing in a hallway and I have a couple of fans on and the room's upstairs on exhaust, I can feel the air moving. And the one door that I have will kind of pull open you know, as because the air is flowing out. So I kind of like to move the air that way. I guess there's really no right or wrong to do it, whatever you like. But um, this is the front of the fan. So we'll, we'll turn it on. We'll start with low as everybody likes to do. And then I will do a low, medium, high. I'm not gonna do spin down from every single speed. I uh, will be here all day, but um, we'll do low, medium, high watch it spin down and then we'll flip it around to the other side and, and take a peek at the exhaust side and on. All right, so here we go. Here's low. This I think was the first time I've ever turned this fan on and I've owned it for 10 years. This, what I like about these Edison's Toastmasters have a nice, powerful low. Yeah, it's noisy, but this is, this is what I, how I sleep. Lakewood low. You can't even hear that it's on. Love my Lakewoods. Just pointing out the differences. Medium. High. Oh. <laughs> this thing. A little rattly, but it's probably because that bent grill on the other side. Yeah, it's the, it's the grills. Moving around is fine. So let's watch the spin down. Whoops. So this sucker is a performer. This this moves a lot of air. It's those Toastmaster Edison motors. I always felt that they were um, big and, and oversized. <laughs> And kind of like a muscle car, right? And I know there's pros and cons for them. Some people don't like them. Some people love them. I love them. I love all, all vintage fans. But have a personal affection for Edison's. So let's just fire up the back of this guy. Let's put it on low. I 
I just think that is so nice looking, so clean looking. So part of the vibration is this, the cabinet's slightly bent, and as I pointed out, the grill is pushed in a little bit, so I am sure that's impacting this. Also, these cabinets, these, you know, these Toastmaster, not a thin and light, not a comfort fan in between cabinets, they, they can bend up easily, I get it. And um, what we're running this on is I have it on a little tiny shelf on top of a table, so that might have some bearing into the, the vibration. So let me know what you think. Uh, like all my videos, please like, subscribe, comment. Uh, a big reason I do this or decided to start making all these videos is I'm really the only one I know who personally know who's really into this hobby. Uh, I see a lot of you on Facebook. Some of you I've connected with and some of you I've exchanged spare parts with and I am always super appreciative of that. Some of you have just given me awesome advice on how to correct some issues in some of my other fans. Thank you. I hope to continue the, the, the discussion and virtually meet more of you. Um, so please feel free to comment. Love to hear from you. As well as uh, check out some of my other fan videos. I have Lascos, Edison's, Lakewoods. Uh, I'm going to keep them coming. I have a bunch more videos coming um, on more, <laughs> more Edison fans. Uh, I do have some cool Lakewoods that, that I would like to share. Uh, some really cool Lakewoods that I personally think are some of my favorites. And then uh, some kind of random in-between fans that I have as well. Ultimately, what I would like to do is kind of do a fan comparison. Maybe take like fans from one uh, single manufacturer and do one video on the comparison of them. Another idea for a video is um, take similar fans from different generations, um, dif different manufacturers. For example, a um, maybe take a thin and light and compare performance to a newer Lasco. Uh, just that kind of thing, you know. Uh, the, the other thing I should probably start doing is I know in some of the, uh, the other collectors' videos they. Uh, take a look at the um, the energy consumption, the power factor, uh, the draw. I haven't really done much of that. It would be also interesting to do. I do have a, uh, a meter that I could do that as well with. So again, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Talk to you soon.